back to my studio. This is Emma. How are you doing today? I hope you're all well and enjoying the autumn, if it's autumn where you are. And obviously if it's spring, that's even nicer, I should think, really. Although it's been a lovely autumn so far, I have to say. Had a bit of rain, had a bit of sun, and it's absolutely gorgeous out there today. So thank you so much for all your comments last week. Obviously doing sketchbooking has kind of just hit hit the spot I think for for this time um, it's very interesting who wants to work in a sketchbook who's not really that bothered it's whatever floats your boat isn't it not not everybody wants to play around with paint and paper and I totally get that but for me it makes a change to step aside from the fabric and get off that sort of I'm not going to use the word treadmill, it's a sort of a, a conveyor belt that keeps carrying you along. I think it's really good to stop and do something completely different. It might not be sketchbooking, you might go and do a workshop in something completely different. And I think that really, it sort of, it sort of wakes you up somehow and gets you thinking in different ways, um, even if it's something you're never ever going to do again. So anyway, the printing last week, making the little landscape, I really enjoyed doing that. And just showing you how you can take, you know, a blank sheet of paper, Put some colour onto it and then that makes it something you can use to add into. I use different colours if I go on with my holiday one, you know, I'll put greys or greens. I put lots of different colours on and then when I get to somewhere that I'm going to draw, I kind of flick through the book and see which one would be the most appropriate for that particular landscape that I'm going to draw. So it's quite good fun. It's like a bit of a lottery. I don't quite know what's going to, how it's going to go. But... Um, so, and the other thing about sketchbooking, I think to me, it's a very personal thing and it's up to you what you put in it. It's for your eyes only, um, so you can play around and take risks. Obviously, I might be showing, you know, a few, a few hundred people on YouTube what I'm doing, but that's fine. That's my, that's my personal choice to do that and I'm quite happy to do that. But it's a place where you can, as I say, play around, mess about, take risks. You know, that thing that you're going, oh, what if, what if, and you just stick it in or you tear it up or you, you know, you print on top of it. If you don't like what you do, it's really easy. And I think I probably will show you that at some point because there's bound to be things that I've done that, that I'm going, mm, not so keen on that one. But it's the printing, it's the process of doing it that I absolutely love. And it can take you on a complete journey. It can occupy you for several hours if once you get started. I find each day I come in, I kind of am doing things differently, I'm doing different kind of subject matter or, I don't know, I just seem to use different colours, slightly different colours or, you know, you sort of start with one bit of the process and it just takes you along and ideas can come once you get started. I just love it, the magic, the magic that happens. So, bit of news, bit of news, which is kind of um, to do with what we're going to do, I'm going to talk about next. Um, got some new chickens, got three new chickens at the weekend. Went to a lovely local sort of, um, well it was just a local person, like a local small holding. And what it is, is we get uh, rehomed chickens from the British, I think it's called the British Welfare, British Hen Welfare Trust, that's it. And what they do is they take farmed chickens, so chickens that have been living on big farms where they're producing lots and lots of eggs. When they come to the end of their kind of useful life, if you like, there's an opportunity for people like us to take them and give them a, you know, a, what they call a retirement. <laughs> Although I have to say, I've never seen anything less retiring than the chickens we've had. Um, they come a little bit, you know, worse for wear, but when we let them out and let them roam around here, they just, they take on a whole new life. And I just love it. We take these sad little chickens and, I mean, the ones we've got currently, the, uh, the older ones, we've got three of them. And we've got three new ones, so I'll have six all together. The older ones are just, they're so feisty. They're just so funny. And these new ones, when we got them, and we put them in the box in the back of the car, and they were like, ooh, ooh, where are we going now? What adventures await us now? So they're currently sort of penned up, uh, and we'll mix them up together, you know, after about a week, we usually mix them up together. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens when we put them all in together. But it's just lovely. It's fun to do. And the thing is, it's made me go out and look at uh, different parts of our bits of land around us. And I spotted something that I thought might be quite inspiring to go into my sketchbook. And I'm going to go out and draw it. And I thought it would be really nice to take you with me. We're going outdoors, everybody. We're going outdoors. So I would suggest you put your coat on, get your wellies. Um, I've got some garden clogs. It's not too wet out there today. And I will take you out and we will see what I spotted. And we'll see where that takes us. So come on, get your coat on and let's go outside.
<laughs> Hello girls, you're going to be famous. You might be famous if I let you be famous. Oh, here's number three. Here's number three. Yes, I know. I know. Behind me. So I hope you enjoy that little bit of fresh air with me. This is what I was drawing. I did little squares just to make it a bit less intimidating to do. And some of them were really tricky to draw because they're just really sort of collapsing fungi and they're just lots and lots of shapes. But I don't mind that because you can get some interesting effects, some little wiggly waggly lines. Um, and some lovely little fairy parasols here. Okay, so I'm just paint, painting up some stalks here and I'm going to print them onto this piece of paper. What I've done is I've cut some little strips of polystyrene and I'm going to just use these to print from my drawings. Very, very simple, simple little drawings and simple little printing, I think. bit of paint. I'm doing this really quite dry, the paint, so that it doesn't go all too splodgy. I've learnt a lot. I've learnt a lot through re re renewing my acquaintance with printing and painting. Let's just put that on there like that. And obviously it's the same sort of shape. There we go. Oh, what fun. It's so instant. This is what I love about printing things. <gasps> There we go. Not got to mind your fingers getting a bit messed up. It's no good worrying about these things. Let's put this over here somewhere, I think. Kind of. Ooh. There, I think. go. It's quite delicate and it needs a stalk now. Okay, so this is really nice. I've cut myself lots of little pieces now of this polystyrene stuff. I'm sure you could do this obviously with lino cutting kind of thing. This is just lovely to do though, I have to say. So I'm just putting a bit of paint on there. I've already done this one once, but I'm just going to do it over again. Just to give it a bit more of our room. Obviously you don't have to use that, you can just use your fingers. There we go, that's better, that's got a bit more oomph to it. And I got particularly what I liked were these lines here on the gills of the, of the fungi. I really like these big brown fungi which I think are very, they're very striking somehow. So what I've done is, I'm just those out of the way. Um, I've just done a very simple drawing onto a printed page. So I used a black, I was going to say wax crayon, but you could use a wax crayon. I actually used an oil, I've got these oil crayons, um, which are oil pastels. They're just the same effect because then when you put some colour wash over the top of them or some paint, as I did in this case, I drew the shapes really quite stark and just simple, messing about and then I've actually painted the brown colour on top just to give it a bit um, a bit of colour to it and then what I did was I actually printed off that so I did like that just to see what would happen and I got these lovely kind of misty ghosts, I got these ghosts of fungi which is almost like 
what they do because they come up out of the ground don't they and they they're there for a few days and then they'd completely disappear and you'd never know they'd been there so I'm thinking about what I could do with these I could obviously I could draw onto them I could add some nice colors I could do some lines on them um, but I think what I'd like to do is just mess about with some stitching into it and see what happens so I'll kind of use this as my reference so that I've got some idea of the lines I want to make and I'm just going to take this over to the sewing machine and just have a little play around with it. So this is my dear old Singer sewing machine that I bought second hand for a little price of money, a little bit of money and I use it for all my paper stitching because don't ask me why I just from time to time like to stitch on paper because it's fun and it's different. Okay so I'm going to start at the back with this little bell one and just see where we get to. So I'm just kind of stitching it like I would if I was drawing it I'm and I'm just making it up as I go along. As I say, I've got this one here as a reference. Oops, Daisy, tangled up there. So I've got my drawing here as a reference, but that's really, I'm just really looking at this and seeing what I want to do. Because by, by printing them off like this, I've actually created something quite different to the drawing, so I'm just going to see what comes out. Oh, I like doing this bit, this is fun. The only, side, the only downside to stitching paper is sometimes it catches on things, so these, especially these little holes, they can get caught on these bits and they can, the paper can sometimes just, you know, like with fabric, you can fold it up and move it out of the way, but sometimes paper's a little bit more tricky to stitch, but it's, as I say, it's really good fun. Um, obviously, these shapes um, are the wrong way around, if you know, because I've printed it, so I've actually got the mirror image to the original drawing that I did, but look, at I'm just really loving how it's bringing this very soft print to life, and I'm not, I'm trying not to be too, like, outliney if you like I'm trying to just do it as though I was sketching it there's a bit of outlining obviously a bit of a hint to try and give you an edge of uh, each piece but uh, yeah it's really good fun I do love doing these gilly bits. These gilly bits are gorgeous to do. Now then this one hasn't really got a very obvious stem. So I'm just gonna, it hasn't got a very obvious stem so I'm just going to make it up. Right, so there we go. That's my stitching done. Let's just, let's just do a bit of tidying up here. Let's do a bit of tidying up here. Okay, so what I wanted to show you was like the sequence. So I did these drawings, they were quite rough, and I looked at the, at the things in the ground. I filmed them as you've seen. I did a drawing from 
sort of out of my head really. That wasn't directly from these. This was just out of my head really, picking up on how those fungi felt to me. And then this is what it looks like when they're stitched. And we'll just move those out of the way because then you can perhaps just see these ones better. And what I really like, apart from all the, the fact that I'm stitching on paper, is how soft these are. I really like the sort of sketchy, soft quality of those because it was a very ill-defined print and I've just done a bit of stitching on top and I really like that. I think that's very soft and gentle. It, you know, I think in the past I would have done um, fungi very much more rigidly and I think this is really lovely. It's really loosened it up and softened it and if I turn the page over, again I've got stitchy lines to kind of take off but um, Take these bits off. Oop. These other bits are a bit in the way. You can't see the lines then that you're supposed to see. So again, I've got something. So there, that's what it looks like on the back. And I really like it. What you get on the back is you get a slightly more textured uh, feel to it because of the way the stitching happens, because you get the holes poking through the paper. So I just think that's really successful. I'm really pleased with that. I mean, there's no colour on here at all except the background, so there isn't even any extra definition of those shapes. And I think that's really pretty. I really like that. It's very soft. And it's a bit like the fungi themselves. If I went out and showed you those, this is a day or two later that I'm doing this, um, from when I filmed them originally, and they've just changed completely, and they're, they'll disappear soon, they'll be gone, and nobody will know they were there. They kind of come up out of the darkness, into the light, and they're there for a few days, and then they're gone. They're so magical, absolutely magical. And I don't know why, I was just totally drawn to go and look at them the other day, and see them, and show them to you. And they've become this sort of inspiration, and I don't know where it's going to take me at all. But I'm quite excited for what might be next. See, that's completely different. When I, t I wish I could show you them both side by side. Perhaps I could. If I do a bit of clever filming, I could do that, couldn't I? Um, I just think it's really interesting, and the, and the difference, and how the journey from the original drawing, filming it, yes, that was part of it. But it's really, it's the looking, it's the looking, and then the feeling which is what creates um, the creativity, if you like. So I think that's been a lovely thing to do. I've really enjoyed that. I hope you've enjoyed that too. Um, stitching on paper, I highly recommend. It's really good fun. It's very different to using fabric. Fabric is very much more defined somehow, um, but paper, yeah. So I've really enjoyed doing that. I hope you have too, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I've loved making it. It's made me feel so creative, and I'm so excited for what might come next. So thank you so much for joining me in my studio again on this lovely day. Uh, beautiful autumn things happening here, and who knows what next week's going to be. I think probably, actually, thinking about it, I think, let me just think about this for a moment. So I think... Probably next week I might just pull together what I've got and show you the sketchbook so far. We'll have a nice flick through and um, yeah, we'll see. I'll put something together for you anyway. It'll be really nice. I've got lots of pages now, lots of lovely pages to show you and put it together. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week. Bye for now.